and similarities. This is the Porsche Dynamic that again was scheduled to be launched at Disney in 1998. Um, this is a very copy version. This is one that was being ridden around, uh, actually this was one that was being ridden around in Europe and the Porsche guys said, you know, it must be hidden when we do, when we do prototype cars, we make sure that the journalists can't tell what they are, so we paint them black. Well, they weren't kidding. They just took a spray bomb and sprayed the entire thing. And of course, this would never draw any attention. <laughs> what person other than an engineer would ever do this to their bike? Somebody think we're hiding it. But anyhow, it was pretty ugly and grotesque. And they put Suzuki, modified Suzuki bodywork on it. You can see from that era. I didn't know what it was. It was Suzuki Dale, so they called it this stuff. Oh, yeah. But this thing had a bunch of, uh, of test miles on it. Some of the interesting things you'll see is this ch chin something here on the motor, which we put in to try to get the weight again, uh, further forward and have a kind of remote uh, sump. But you see it's rubber mounted. Uh, high bars, you see the uh, underslung muffler and other fun stuff. But along the way, um, Harley Davidson decided they needed uh, to use the engine in their bike. And they started working on the engine and what wound up happening is the two kind of diverted. Because I had an engine weight target of 100 and you know, 150 pounds or something, and that was not on their agenda. They had other reasons they wanted the bike to be styled and bigger and things like that. And so their engine started drifting, uh, although some of the internals, a lot of the internals were the same. And somewhere in 97 or something, the program was being delayed to try to juggle all this stuff. They uh, said, uh, or it might have been 98, obviously we're missing our original launch date. Um, they said, we can't do both motors. If you're going to do it, you're going to have to use the V-Rod motor. And I said, I, I can't, guys. I mean, the V-Rod's a beautiful engine, but it's too big for a sport bike. I mean, they weigh 210 pounds. Uh, you know, a good leader engine, and, and, which is not heavy for a big cruiser engine. It's cool. It's fine. But it's, the answer is, I can't make up 60 pounds of chassis. I can't. It can't be done. I can make up 30 pounds, and I can do it any day over most companies. But I can't do 60. And they said it's only a five-speed version, it's only a five-speed, which they wanted because torque and drivability, I mean, it's, it's what you need. You guys have all ridden a V-Rod's a wonderful motorcycle for what it does, but it isn't a sport bike engine. Sorry, I know there's something to think of this, but I disagree. <laughs> uh, anyhow, um, so it got chilled, and we did the blast. Uh, it's hardly needed an entry-level bike to train people on. And then in the background, I took the work that we were doing on, the, on this and said, well, and I've got to do something with it, and that is the XP. <laughs> we'll redo the air-cooled motor and put it in this chassis and uh, uh, did some more sophisticated stuff. And it wound up being a very wonderful, you know, great bike. The XP since we rode them yesterday. It's been a great, great motor. Yeah. Uh, but that's the heritage of it all. All in. That's good, man. Yeah, that's sweet. I learned a lot. That's rad. And Eric, one couple of questions. On this engine, can you go over the initial design of our Like I said, it was, uh, well, it's a guy named Mark Miller was doing all the design work at, at Harley. What's kind of interesting is that um, this, um, so I, and again, I just did sketches and concepts and the kind of things that you would do as a chassis guy, saying this is what I want to have in an engine, and it was built around it. We had a couple of compromises, one of which was unfortunate. One is the way we originally had designed the engine was it, it had a vertical split and it had a uh, transmission, the cartridge that came out the side, so you could change the transmission. But Harley, at that time, the guy who was the head of engineering at the time, Mark Tuttle, wanted to say, no, we've got to have this be the basis of a production engine. And it needs to be horizontally split, and we can't afford a cartridge-type transmission. Unfortunately, that split line wound up moving the swing arm pivot down. So I would have had to have been a little compromised by that. But anyhow, that's the only thing that, that they changed from a packaging standpoint. But it's the same view. It's a 60-degree, uh, you know, water-cooled, double-overhead cam. Um, uh, motor um, and um, this is probably pre Roush getting involved and in doing the head uh, to improve the head flow and then they wound up doing more stuff on the motor and then that's actually where Steve Scheibe came from was hired out of Roush uh, but this is the initial uh, engine I don't know what else you want to know about it 
Mm. That power didn't 60 make. degrees. Uh, I don't think this one ever made enough power. I think okay. it blew up on the dyno a okay. number of times. It was in the air. That <laughs> happens in development stages with every motor. You know, fails, 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 fails. And yeah, there's just things that break. The oiling system they were having problems with and stuff like that. But, you know, the bore stroke and the heads and everything are, uh, you know, the port size and the valves are really the same as the VR. So it would have been a... Eric, Eric is, that, is that mount for, like, dyno... For bench testing, or this, yeah, no, that's for a, that's a tie bar to go to a B bracket to make the engine a stress member of the frame, oh, so I can get the torsional rigidity out of the chassis because this was rubber mounted because this had no balancers in it. Oh wow! So oh, we just, needed to let it yeah. flow a little degrees. in the Did chassis. You say it yeah, that's where the starter would have been, I guess. This is sweet, I'm narrow. It's a long time, a lot of this stuff. Could you talk a little bit from the? Uh, uh, the V-rod motor to the heel of the motor, kind of what, what happened <laughs> to the uh, old well, that was the board. Board. So, uh, Well, the whole deal was, again, because I've been wanting to do this bike now for, you know, 20 years. And so when we finally got a start, chance to do it again, XB was doing well. We were making money with the XB. We went back and said, I, we really need this water-cooled motor. We're doing more than we ever thought we could do in the air-cooled market. But, man, 90% of the market's out there waiting for us. And Harley at that time said, well, you know, you, you could use that motor that we have, but we're busy with a million other projects. We really don't have time to do another engine, which is very true. And they had even used Porsche for help on the first one. And they said, so you're going to have to go somewhere else again. And so we went to, uh, to Rotax with the same concept. Now, obviously, I had learned a few things in 15 years or whatever, one of which, in my mind, is 60 degree closed off the intake ports too much. I wanted the port angle. Uh, opened up, so I needed to broaden the V. And um, uh, but basically, it was a lot of the same specification set that we had written in '87. Actually, when we talked in the first meeting uh, about it, and uh, so that was the deal. Went up to Rotax and said, "This is what I want. You know, this is what we want to get in an engine." And then we paid for it from the money from you know the XB sales and those kinds of things was to get that motor done. So it was a, an independent uh, project. So it's a uh, you know, lots of detail changes, obviously, you know, in whether it be crank bearing sizes or pore sizes or all those things that happen. But basically, it's the same fundamental concept as what we were trying to do, which is a nice, you know, big, torquey, high hop powered, but very torquey, very rideable engine in a light, nimble, you know, kind of chassis, which is what that was. And guys, that bike is out, that bike was in the era of an 851 Ducati. Prototypes, the early hmm. ones. So it was pretty, I wish we could have done it at that time. I think it would have uh, made a lot of history. Mm -hmm. You talking about this one right here? This guy is like... And, and you call it the first VR? What do you call yeah. that? Yeah, I named the VR. That was my name. I came up with a VR designation. And I sent that through to the guys. So I still kind of call it there. I guess you could call it a VR for Buell. <laughs> 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 I don't know what it, I don't know what it is. Uh, oh. And that's this motor in there. That's what it is. Yeah. And the similarities were enough that the, 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 this, you know, second generation VR motor to fit in. The difference was the mount location they had to come on, but everything else was in the same place. The heads were in the same place. The intake was in the same place. The output uh, was in the same place. Was Bill involved with that Superbike project? No, uh, we were not. They were. Uh, I mean, this space. It's it's but phase. when it started going, uh, no, we were out of the project then, and then. Even in '93, we came on board. It was a, a separate deal. And um, we're the last year. The last year that it existed, we were allowed to work, and we did a derivative version of it, where we reworked one and put split radiators on it, did some steering head angle, changed the chassis a little bit, uh, did some things like that. And that bike actually worked well. Sean was. We were out testing, and Sean was quicker. And Sean was our developer at that. He was more than a second quicker than Pascal. On the way. Wow. VR. So. Uh, we think we were heading in the right direction, but then that program was shut down. Was that a, was that a, a, t a tough time for you guys? I mean, feeling like you know you guys kind of created the, the, the roots of a lot of this, and you guys oh, yeah. were supposed to be the sport bike arm of Harley, and then Harley's out racing. Uh, <laughs> well, we, we really thought we could have been part of it. I don't think we could have helped us, you know. Yeah. And uh, now we're doing it. 